Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem, this is Foundry VTT version 12, and this is Curse of Strahd, the Death House. Um, right, so in the last video we almost finished. Um, we finished the dungeon level 2, but I left ourselves with a couple of things about the escape from the house, and I'm going to run you through what my setup is and what I did. I'm not going to do it on screen for you, I'm just going to show you because I've already done it. Um, didn't want to walk that through and, and bore you too much. Um, still got a little problem with our dungeon down here. We've got a pressure plate over on the top left. When the players enter this area, it starts playing sounds that emanate from this tile down here. And what I wanted was a, a tr tile trigger on the entrance here and by the secret door, which is over here, that uh, when the players entered this bit, it would stop that chant. So it would go silent when they walk into here until they tread on the Diaz, Diaz, raised platform, <laughs> days, <laughs> whichever way, wherever, wherever it's actually called. But when they when they step onto the raised platform here, then it would start a different sound. Um, but I cannot get the monk's active tile triggers to stop the sound that tile was playing. Um, I can get it to start, that's fine. I cannot get it to stop unless I use like this tile over here. If I click on this tile, it turns off all sounds for the scene, including the one playing from there. So it's a little bit weird. This tile, click on, works. Um, this tile, which I had step on, doesn't work, uh, which is a bit weird. So I'm going to have to do that manually. Uh, not, It's not a big deal. As they enter this room, I'm just going to click over here and it's going to stop those sounds. Um, and then this one will automatically play when they move on to it. It's really not a big deal. It's just a shame that that's not quite working as I want it to at the moment. Uh, unknown reason. It will stop. It just won't if you activate it with a player treading on it. So anyway, uh, after they finish this, as you may be aware, certainly if you watched the previous video, there's two outcomes for this main thing. Um, once we walk onto this area here, these ghostly figures appear around and they start chanting, one must die. The players have a choice to either make a sacrifice on the altar of any living thing. It's up to you whether you decide a familiar counts as that living thing <laughs> or an animal companion. Um, and if they make that, the house goes silent, everything's normal, they can just leave again. If they refuse to make that sacrifice and try to leave, the house basically goes all amateurville horror on them um, and doesn't want them to leave. So what I decided to do about that is we've got our normal death house here. Um, so if they do make the sacrifice, they're just going to be able to walk out and they're just going to be able to leave back out the way they came, no drama. If they don't, the death house is going to change. So rather than putting all these extra tiles on to, to activate, I decided to duplicate the entire death house scene and then replace some of the areas to turn it evil. Okay, so if they escape normally, they'll go out for the normal death house. Um, if they don't make the sacrifice, then they have to, and then I'll take them to the death house evil escape. I don't know why I called it that, I just did. So let me show you what I did. First of all, let me open my levels. Um, and take you to the attic here. Um, it was all very dark, of course, because uh, I turned all the lighting down. Um, so all I did is all of the lights that were on in the normal version, I've turned them all on and I've made them red. Okay, so it gives us, and you saw previously, you know, that kind of red glow. So that's what I did for all of those. Let's move down to the second floor. You can see all those lights they're just glowing, etc. Now you can already see the next thing that I did. Let me uh, let me grab a Haley in here because weirdly enough, Haley will give us she won't give us some better lighting. That's fine. There we go. That that's a bit better. Um, so what I then did was where any of these fireplaces are. Um, I've put some smoke billowing out of those fireplaces. It's not perfect. But it doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. It's not a computer game. Um, it's just to illustrate that. That smoke will kind of fill the room. But I want them to kind of get this impression that that's where it's spilling from. How did I do that? It's just a tile with a, well, a tile image or video. Now, where did I pick that from? So I did make a couple of changes to my modules and I added on um, sequencer and JB2A. 
okay so that gives us access to a lot of those animations from JB2A so go back to here I've now got top left I've now got my sequencer database all I did was go into here uh, and I searched for some words uh, and I looked for ones that I liked um, what's going to actually work for this you know, like none of these are going to work or oh, I've got some plumes so and I think actually it was one of these that I did actually go with but there's a few different ones here um, I slightly adjusted the colors to make them a bit darker and I just slapped them in and rotated them and as you may have seen I've, I've got uh, I've actually got two laying over each other so you, if you watch that sequence this longer plume out to the right kind of fades it will it will fade there we go it fades out again but it doesn't disappear completely because I've got the second one here that is more permanent so that's all I did for that and then I literally just copied and pasted that to every other place where there's a fireplace and just turn them around. I did that on every level. So once I got my initial uh, tile set up, really easy, copy and paste. Uh, same with the lights, like, as I said, I changed the lights to be this red color, um, and then I just copied and pasted it over all of the other lights and took out the old ones. So again, once I'd set up the first one, really simple. And the blade barriers. So I went into my walls and I removed everywhere that there's a door. I just took that out completely. So there is no door there now. They can just walk straight through it. Anywhere there was a window, I've completely removed the window as a thing. I know that's as a window, but it's just actually a wall so that they can't open any windows or anything like that, even though they initially could. Um, and of course, in these doorways, it talks about the fact that these doors are replaced with these um, whirling um, like blades. Now, when I've kind of read the description I wasn't imagining like daggers but again I was looking for an animation to slap in there and cloud of daggers was the right one I just thought yeah that's going to work for me cloud of daggers so again I created a tile I went to JB2A um, in fact I'll show you how I did that I went into here basically uh, and if I can actually manage to use a mouse if I go daggers, it's like, oh, cloud of daggers. And I looked at these and I went, oh, uh, red's going to fit. Okay, so all I did was on the left to, on the left hand side of the, the word red here, I've got play that animation and I've got the database link and I've got the file link. I clicked on the file link. I created a new tile and pasted that link directly in here. So you can see that is coming from JB2A library, second level spells, blah, 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 blah. So I just posted that in there. Um, and then I just shaped my tile to fit the doorway. So normally it'd be like this. And that's what it looked like in the animation. All I did was stretch it. So now it looks like more like a wall rather than... Now, you, yeah, you might argue that... Whoops. You might argue that you want it... I hold shift uh, like that but I felt that that lost a little bit too much of the uh, of, of the imagery so I've left it like that and again once that was done I just copied and pasted it and anywhere I've got a vertical door instead of having it that way I just moved it that way <laughs> that's all I did so it's a very dramatic change for the players but it really it was change the lights put in some smoke copy and paste it in and then put in the blades copy and paste it in so that is all through the whole house um, I did put, add some extra lights to the fireplaces as well I just realized did I do that yeah I did yeah so I've got this other pulsating light from the fireplaces that I added on so we've got lots of uh, different lighting it's very red it makes it feel a bit more kind of evil you could argue this is a little bit too bright here but all the way down to the ground floor um, Again, if they make it this far, yes, red lights in the porch here. Um, but as soon as they get outside, I've got Haley out here. As soon as they get outside, I want a normal lights. As soon as they're outside of the building, that's it. They're back to normal. So that's what I did. So that means, looking at our scenes, we've now got our landing page, which works absolutely fine. Our mysterious visitors is working absolutely fine. We've got the Svalich Road. We've got the Death House. So the only thing I need to really double check for the Svalich Road is the combat bit. So where we have potentially the combat with the wolves. Now my intention as the DM 
is they shouldn't have that fight. I want them to run. <laughs> I do not want them to get into that fight. Um, but you can't control the players, so I need to be ready for them to have that fight. I do need to update my images for my wolves again here um, because I, I did update it. Um, and it's uh, it's yeah, it's yeah, got rid of my images, but any of these I should just be able to go back into appearance, go hang on a minute, where's my... What did I do with wolf? I mean, I can come down and just pick the normal wolf, of course. Uh, job done, sorted. Um, it's not a big deal. Um, I can fix those. Uh, but that's the only thing that I just want to make sure that my combat is working for this. Now, again, just looking at our modules, what we're using in Curse of Strahd. Yes, I've got 5e stat block importer purely for setup purposes. I have got auto rotate on. I like auto rotate that we looked at before, so I'm going to be using that for my players going around the house. Um, I'm not 100% sure if they're going to want to use tokens like Haley and Nundro at the bottom here, or, or if they're going to want to top down tokens. I'm going to leave the players to decide that, but I certainly want my monsters top down tokens and to be rotating. My carousel combat tracker, again, I'm going to look at some of the settings of that to see if I'm happy with it. Um, I might want to, so just so you're aware, one of the options in the combat carousel tracker is to change some of the background um, images for the tracker itself. So I could find something more gothic, um, a bit more horror oriented for that. I might do that. I've got combat booster on. We looked at that very recently. I really like that. Um, I like the way that's going to speed up combat with those most recent used turns. And that might even mean I can do away with um, with the, actually using the, the HUD down here. Not 100% not sure. I think I'll leave the HUD on, the token bar down here on for now. Dice are nice, of course. DBB importer for me to get my monsters in. FX master for some extra weather things if I need them. Uh, I like my hover distance for combat on maps. I'm going to probably keep that in for Curse of Strahd. Don't really need, don't really need it yet. I'm not uh, having enough distance to worry about it. I've got image context in. If you remember, that allows me just to go to any of my images and pull them up straight away. So if I go to my tile thing, uh, I can show that, send it to chat, send to chat. Uh, oh, previously, yeah, I couldn't show you the whisper thing. But I can just decide to whisper it to those two and they can see that image. Okay, so we can do that. I've got my levels on, of course. JB2A, I've just added. Lib wrapper I need. Monk's active tile triggers, obviously. Uh, currently, Mo Monk's token bar may or may not keep that. I probably will. The ownership viewer, so that I could track who could see what in things like my journals. Sequencer for my animation. Socket lib, because it's a support thing. Ripper's module hub, because it's a support thing. Uh, torch and wall height so it looks like a lot but actually there's not that much in here there really is not that much in here at all um, it's good to go I am going to run through a combat make sure I'm happy with it no midi QOL on here none at all um, I need to make the judgment call on whether I'm happy with the combat the way it is or whether I want to use a little bit of that automation um, especially for applying damage and stuff how much fighting are they going to do yeah, it's a fair bit throughout the whole thing. We will see. I can always adjust later once we started playing um, this if I want to. But I would like... So I, I know, sorry, segueing slightly. I know that the player group that is going to be first in to run Curse of Strahd in the near future are not Foundry experienced. So I've got a group that have never used Foundry at all. So I want to make sure that their experience is as slick as possible. They can just crack on and enjoy it without having to learn loads of stuff and I don't want to be changing how it's working um, very often. Uh, there will be bits I tweak but I don't want to do that very much. Um, but that's it. That's the whole of the Death House done. Um, we've got all of our mods in that we need. The only question is over whether I'm happy about combat and um, the, the hub down here. Do I need it? A little bit of tweaking and stuff. But I just thought I'd give you the update of how I'm handling that. That's all good to go. So uh, what will happen in the next Curse of Strahd videos will be be about the rest of the adventure <laughs> once they've done this bit um lovely anyway thank you very much leave a like leave a comment and of course if you're not subscribed please do so it really does help out the channel and encourages me to keep going and spending my time doing these things and showing off stuff cheers take care